Hey, yeah, it's Lilius, aka GK Quinoline, and this is this week's vlog. So, this week I kind of decided to do something a little bit different. I've been feeling a little bit under the weather, and so I've been watching a ton of videos on YouTube by a woman called Zoe Hong. Check her out, I will link her down in the description bar below. Her videos are fantastic, they are so good, so helpful, and she is just a fountain of knowledge. Love. So, I'm starting the design process for my collection and this is me flicking through a older sketchbook from HNC in college, this was my graded unit you know, sketchbook, um, just to refresh myself a little bit on how I work. Uh, it was fantastic watching Zoe's um, series, um, which I think is called um, design along with me or something like that. It's a fantastic series basically where she goes through her entire design process um, and you're invited to design along with her which is kind of what I'm doing. Um, I have a slightly different process though and that's just because I learned the way that I do this at college and um, that's what works for me or what seems to work for me. I'm happy to change it up a wee bit but uh, I need to start with what I know, I think, before I can add in new things. And I went through the huge pack of swatches that I got in my swatches haul from the Organic Textiles Company, and I chose some of the fabrics that just really seemed to sing to me, that really just, I felt, were ones I was excited to work with, and picked them out, broke them up into what colours uh, they seemed to have naturally just come in and um, see, saw if I could kind of make that into a bit of a colour story in itself. Um, I not, I'm not happy with this colour story I don't think, but it gives me um, a base to start with that I can start playing around with later on um, and it gives me a little bit more direction. So I'm just labelling all the little parts of the samples that I cut out so that I can pop them into my sketchbook, refresh back onto them later on, but it gives me a good place to start um, that I can look back on later. This was what was in my head right now and I had to get it out of my head before I could get anything new to come out. And um, That's just how I have to do it sometimes. <laughs> I decided to um, use some watercolours just to see if I could get those colours down easily enough with the watercolour. Um, some of them are so vibrant though that it really took a good couple of layers to really get anything like them. So I would do these huge big patches of colour. I find that um, from working in A3 sketchbooks for the last couple of years of college it really helps me to just start big and then get a little bit smaller as I go along. But the bigger something is, the more detail you can add on later on, or you can cut bits out of it later on, all that kind of stuff. Uh, at college, we'd actually start with um, A2 or A1 sheets of paper, and we'd just cover them in paint. Um, we'd get some colours that were coming out of our research uh, initially, and we'd just cover them in those kind of paints. The colours might change later on, we might make new papers later on, but if we had some papers to work with, then we had stuff that we could cut out. So I keep a little sketchbook all of the time called an inspiration book and uh, just textures that I like I just chuck in there. So I flick through that first to remind myself of um, the things that really excite me when I'm not looking for them. Because <laughs> um, sometimes you, you end up looking so hard that you can't really see anything at all. When I was at college, um, we constantly had to go and research things, print off all of our research, chuck them in sketchbooks, and any time I would buy a magazine or something, I would rip out anything that interested me at all because I thought, well, this might be handy for college. So it means that I now have this huge big folder full of papers, textures, uh, those um, acetates are from screen printing, uh, uh, full copies of fabric and uh, just all sorts of strange stuff that's really great for sketchbooking with. Uh, if you start sketchbooking yourself, I really strongly suggest you just gather stuff. Somebody gives you something of cool wrapping paper, chuck the wrapping paper in the folder. If somebody gives you a greetings card and you like the picture, chuck it in the folder. Like, all of that stuff. So there's um all sorts 
in there. There's a lot of articles about textile designers and stuff as well that I might come to later on. But where I like to start with is always my own work and my own photos. And these were taken from a project from college where we had to start with architecture. I'm fascinated by architectural clothing, so I thought, well, maybe I should start with architectural images. So I found the most modern architecture that photos that I could. A lot of the photos were from Dundee and a lot of the buildings in Dundee are a lot older. There's some statues and stuff. And that's actually where I was concentrating a lot of my research at that time. But now I'd really like to look at slightly more modern stuff, I think. So um, cutting away the stuff that is not important to the image for me. If there's, if I like it because there's specific lines or textures or something, I just want to see that and I don't want to see the guff around it. So I just cut away anything that I don't really want to see. Which sometimes means that you have all these kind of weird shapes from photos already cut out and that can influence your design and stuff as well. Um, or sometimes like this one that I'm just sticking down now. This is um, stairs and banisters from uh, the Overgate Shopping Centre. And I decided to stick the photo upside down so that I no longer saw it like that. I just saw it as shapes and lines and stuff and could use it that way. And then those are the all the weird bits of texture, ventilation kind of stuff. Again, from the Overgate, I think. Um, I just really like the repetitive texture of them. And there's my youngest come to join in and glue stuff down as well. It's obsessed with gluing and sticking and stickers, because he's two. <laughs> so to start with, I'm just taking some of the shapes that I see and that I like. And I realised that the stairs had all these gradients of grey, so I want to kind of play with that a little bit. I'm trying to um, explore the shapes that it makes, those kind of overlapping triangles, how those triangles overlap. Um... And again, with those gradients of grey and stuff, I have no idea yet what I might use this for, if I use this at all, but it gets me thinking in the way that I kind of need to be thinking. Um, abstracting the image into different shapes instead of seeing them as images and literal things, basically. Um, and I always seem to start with triangles, lines and circles, and I don't know why. It's probably the easiest way to break stuff down is to break it down to, to its basic shapes or something. I don't know. I love cutting stuff out of card when I start sketchbooking because it's so quick and so easy and you can just get down really simple lines and images um, without the texture of pens or paints or anything like that. Um, so I always have tons of coloured card and card from different things and stuff to do that with. I also really find folding paper in different ways helpful um I guess because it's kind of similar to fabric without having to actually deal with the fabric um and you can kind of it brings it out into 3d and I think as soon as I start thinking 3d it makes a lot more sense to me um because you know, clothes clothes aren't flat you're not paper dolls it's everything goes round bodies and stuff so it uh helps me to start thinking that way um also, anything that I do fold, um, I look at both sides of. For, so for that, I, I love the reverse side of it as well. So uh, I've done it again and stuck it down on the reverse, which kind of reminds me of like quilting or something. I guess the, the, the other one looks a bit like piping. and I don't know. I'll think more about it later on. Right now, I just want to get shapes down and, and just abstract stuff out and then I can play with that later on. So yeah, I'm hoping to film as much of my design process for this as possible, but sometimes that's just not convenient. As you can see, there's a two-year-old next to me and uh, that happens a lot. So <laughs> um when it is convenient, when I am able to film, I will film, but um, I I don't know if that's going to be able to happen for every single page of a sketchbook. Um, and at some point I'm going to have to draw the line as well and, and move on to the next stage of the design process. Hopefully that will just happen naturally, but there's a huge chance it won't. 
<laughs> so now that I have these basic shapes, I'm going back in and doing some, uh, I think some continuous lines and things just to get a little bit more detail in there. And that's us off. Ah, oh, you did a cute little face. Not mine, obviously. My no makeup. Tired, tired, sleepy face. But that little face is the cutest. <laughs> anyway, I will have another video up on Wednesday for you. Uh, please let me know if you like this video. Like, comment, subscribe. All of that kind of lovely stuff. And um, if you are a design student of any kind, please comment down below and let me know what your design process is. Love you. Bye.